Uh, gentlemen, good morning to you both. Scott, I'll start with you. You've got Morgan. a 4700 year-end price target on the S&P. We're currently trading around 4085 right now. Do you stick with that target? And if so, how do we eventually get there? It has been not only a whiplash week, but just an incredibly tough start to the year. Yeah, it's a fair point. What I would say is that our 4,700 target implies some degree of soft landing in the underlying economic circumstance. We know that we've got Fed tightening ahead. We talked about this earlier this week. We were looking for 450 basis point uh, moves consecutively uh, over, over the coming months. We've got one in addition to the 25 basis points in March. So it's still premature to say how the Fed activity is going to ultimately impact underlying economic conditions. Earnings growth remains strong and has been a positive story through all of this. So I'd say what, what you know, is critical here is that you do get the Fed moving back towards a neutral uh, policy benchmark, which you know most people think is in the 2 to 2.5% .2 Fed funds range. If we can get there with some slowdown in earnings, but again, soft landing type earnings, then I think there's still a path forward uh, to, the, to the upside from here. We've been most focused in, in um, navigating this volatility by playing themes such as quality from a factor perspective, those companies that have some built-in um, inflation resistance, if you will, that also have strong balance sheets uh, uh, and sort of you know, strong profitability characteristics as well. But I'd say, what I would just point out here is that, you know, I think what we're looking at in, in our work anyway, is a recession scenario, mild recession scenario, which in our view would take us down to say 3650. When you look at the risk from here to that level versus the upside to our soft landing end of the year target, you know, you can see where the market is kind of betwixt between, but it, the further down we go, the more gets priced in regarding recession fears, which I think we, see, we think sets up for some relief as the year unfolds. Okay, I want to dig into that a little bit deeper. But first, John, I want to get your take on the market action we've seen, especially given the fact that it's not just stocks that have been selling off steeply and have been so volatile, but bonds, too. Yeah, it, it, Morgan, I've got to say, when, when we look at this, this reminds us a lot of 2009, uh, when you're coming out of a major crisis, major uncertainty as well. Uh, and that gives a good opportunity for the bulls and the bears to uh, stave off against each other. Uh, in our case, we were bullish in 09 and, and widely quoted as so. Uh, it, you know, when we look back on that, you got to remember the market declined something like 25% uh, in the first quarter, hit a nasty bottom on March 9, and then proceeded to rise 60% to the end of the year, leaving at the end of the year, the S&P was up 23% for the full year. Uh, we're not going to suggest that, you know, history is going to repeat itself, but it may very well rhyme past performance, no guarantee of future results. But right now, we're in a position where both in the bond market and the stock market, uh, there's a lot of voices that are saying, what, are, what have you done for me lately? And what are you going to do with me uh, today or tomorrow or the next day? When the reality is, this is a, a three steps forward, four steps back, five steps forward, three steps back kind of environment. You're looking for progress, not perfection. And the Fed is doing its job. It pivoted in the fourth quarter, very much like it pivoted in the fourth quarter of 2018 on a mirror image of what's going on right now. And uh, we think uh, effectively you want to stay positive here and avoid projecting overly negative.